let me tell you about a really, really remarkable girl that I know. And uh, she's only 17 years old. She loves bicycling. She uh, uses education to talk about the value of uh, girls staying in school. And she's also challenging outdated gender norms in Uttar Pradesh, India. This is Rajni. And, uh, you know, you may not have heard Rajni's name before, but I assure you, every single person in her village has. And that's because when Rajni was only 14 years old, she, her parents did something that is actually quite normalized, unfortunately, in that part of northern India, uh, and that is they arranged her marriage. But it's not exactly what Rajni, it's not the arranged marriage itself that is why Rajni is known. Because in Uttar Pradesh, the state where I work, 2.8 million children are married under age 18. And in a country, India, with the sixth largest rate of child marriages, Uttar Pradesh is number one. <laughs> so it's actually what happened as a result of this really, you know, horrendous situation what, that makes Rajni so incredible. And that is, she fought back. She not only stopped her own marriage, she went further and she stopped three child marriages in her community. So, you know, when I met Rajni in 2015, uh, and this is her community uh, in Sitapur, Uttar Pradesh, she was actually biking 35 miles per day, round trip, just to get to school. <laughs> and over the past year and a half that I've known her, she has really become a respected voice in her community. Uh, I think this picture helps uh, clarify that. So while you all might not know Rajni's name, you probably most likely know the name of 19-year-old Pakistani activist Malala. And for those that don't know, Malala was, uh, just like Rajni, spent her youth fighting against uh, inequalities and just to get an education, and was injured in Taliban-occupied territory at age 14. Um, at 17, she was the youngest uh, person to receive a Nobel Peace Prize. So the question I have is, what does it mean that you know Malala's name, but you probably don't know Rajni's name? And should the goal be to turn Rajni's into, global, into Malala's via broadening their exposure globally? And does success look the same in different areas of development? So I'd like to examine uh, how the seed of change is planted both on the larger global scale, as well as on the rural community level. And how that helps to drive a fundamental mindset from both angles. So, and, and additionally, how can we even begin to make a dent in a world where amazing girls like Malala and Rajni uh, are facing such, uh, you know, extraordinarily horrible <laughs> circumstances? So when I left the country to work uh, in the development sector almost five years ago, um, I had the opportunity to work in Thailand with some really amazing women. And that would later drive me to work in uh, Calcutta, uh, India. Uh, and I worked for a nonprofit where we worked with women to upskill them in uh, rural areas. And then they would migrate to urban areas and get jobs there. Um, and what I was really struck with working with these women was the vast potential that they had and also the passion for education and information. Um, but unfortunately, as adolescents, they just did not have access to um, education as they deserve. Um, so I began to imagine a world where 
women, like these women, they were identified younger and they were appreciated in their own communities for their tenacity and for their intellect. And this got me thinking about the potential of working with adolescent girls. And I started thinking about investing in them to remain in their communities and drive the change themselves. So I moved to Lucknow in the state of Uttar Pradesh and worked for the organization Milan. And this is when I co-founded Girl Icons. And uh, to tell you a little about, uh, about the Girl Icon program, um, the Girl Icon program recognizes girls ages 12 through 18 for a period of two years. And we assign them mentors. Uh, we do a very comprehensive um, leadership training with them, residential leadership training. And we also um, give them very small grants and we help them develop a peer group of 20 plus girls within their communities so that those groups can go out and do three social action projects. And the idea is a radiating effect of change. So take a breather. I want you all to imagine, just for one minute, an orange, just a single orange. So I want to imagine that you cut the orange and then you pick out each seed and you have the seeds in your hand. And you can probably tell me how many seeds you have in your hand. Then I want you to imagine that you take one of those seeds and you look really, really closely at it, like really closely. Do you think that you could then tell me how many oranges are in that seed? Probably not. How many groves, how many trees are in that seed? So, and furthermore, if you were to take that one seed and you were to plant it in a, a dry, barren climate, and you were to give it support and nurturing, it might become a tree. And then that tree might become a, an orange grove. And then, hopefully, that grove would nurture an entire lush ecosystem around it. That's the hope. So this is what we're trying to achieve with the Girl Icon program. We, take, we, we reach out and select those seeds. We nurture them to grow into prosperous trees. And then they reach out, they grow their roots, and they build lush ecosystems of peers and enlightened communities. So because in a country where, and this is a hard one, one in 100 girls in rural India complete 12th grade. Really difficult statistic. In a country where this is actually true, <laughs> uh, the process, it's a, it's a really long and tough road for girls like Rajni. But the good news is the process starts with just one seed. So I want you to meet 18-year-old Saiba. And uh, Saiba is also a girl icon, but her story previous to becoming a girl icon is actually uh, a little bit harsher. She um, suffered through years of abuse at her father's hands, and her father actually multiple times unenrolled her from school. In other words, she would go to school, she would enroll, she would be in school, and he would come and unenroll her. Um, and so, you know, battling through this for years, uh, eventually Saiba had to watch her entire village burn down. Still, <laughs> Saiba is a, a strong young woman. And, uh, you know, she came out of this and now has uh, a strong peer group. She's used her voice to build a strong peer group. And she also works um, on the community radio as a DJ and she also tutors girls in her community. Um, she's a very uh, tenacious young lady. <laughs> so 
Now, again, you might not know Saiba's name, right? But like Rajni, those one or two villages or those communities surrounding Saiba, they definitely have heard Saiba's name. And it's leaders like Saiba or Rajni that can really be role models to girls in those communities on the ground and then can begin to even start to make an impact from the ground up. And uh, what these girls can start doing in order to build this lush ecosystem is they can start this process of transformation. And to do that, they have to first start by recognizing the barriers that exist for girls like Saiba and Rajdi. Then they can move forward with their peers to reconcile. And that is a process of healing. Um, they need to, they have seen these barriers where they need to heal and work through it with the community. And the last part of the process, which is one of the most important, is rebuild. So then they can work with their peers, with their parents, with the local government, and they can rebuild to create a beautiful new ecosystem of change. And uh, Saiba and Rajni are all working together right now in northern India to rebuild and create a host of peers to, who are all setting out roots of change. So I think it's really important that we don't forget about these young leaders on the grassroots level. Um, especially when we're thinking about the larger global vision of change. And this doesn't always mean that we export those local voices into the global eye. Uh, we need to equip those voices with skills and then we need to send them back into the village where they can then use those skills to enrich their communities. And they can become the very relatable change next door. So now I want you all to take another breather and to imagine yourselves in North India and you're in a rural village, perhaps somewhere in Sitapur, Uttar Pradesh, and uh, you don't have access to TV, but you might have radio, and you probably don't really have electricity, I'm gonna be honest, but, uh, and that means no fans, especially when it's 104 degrees outside. But, and it, it, if you would like some water, you can go outside and you can use the hand pump and get that water. So, sitting inside of your relatively cooler cottage, like this one, um, and looking outside, I want you to consider that all these girls and all the girls in this village, they probably have never, ever heard of Malala. But the good news is they probably know Rajni and Saiba. They know a Rajni and Saiba. So what I want us to do is to focus not only on the global activists, but also there's a real need to focus on the local in-community activists on the ground, who are sources of inspiration for their communities, for their parents, for everyone who's within their, their ecosystem. And they can also act as guides towards something better. See, in order to create real systemic change, we can't work just from one direction. We need the global, visible activists like Malala, but we also need the Rajnis and the Saibas to transform from the ground up. Imagine a very solid rock, hard ground, now, with the proper support, you can still nurture a tree to grow through that ground, and its roots can still break through the ground. And the, the girl icons are an example of how 
this can happen in real society. Uh, because they're now equipped with basic skills like financial literacy, um, human rights, and reproductive health. So in this way, it won't take just one seed or one global voice to bring about change or to crack this ground. It will take an ecosystem of fruitful trees, agents of change, and uh, ideas to break these inequalities down. And it will take a legion of girls like Saiba, Malala, and Rajni to drive this shift. So I'm hopeful about the future.